What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today what we're doing is a bunch of prefabs. We are making a bunch of prefab. Let's have a look at what we've made. We've made a lot of pieces and pieces pounder. We have different prefab for different kind of ramps, slide and long blocks like this one, this one. They're all under prefab that we can actually use. They have the nice scripts on it. And most importantly, we now have the colliders for our game. So if we just like decide to spawn a long block, this is going to be the collider. We have the ramps as well. You can put right in front of it and they all just match perfectly. You also have the slides. And those are only colliders and then we're going to spawn the aesthetic on top of it. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so we reached the part where we have to lay down our prefab. We, had, we have to start creating our prefab that we'll be spawning using the level manager. So this part, like I said, a little bit complicated, but we're gonna get through it. Um, the reason it's complicated is because we have more than just pieces prefab. We have pieces spawner and then we have segment on top of it. So something I recommend you do right now is you head over to your prefab folder and start creating another folder. This one for the pieces another one for the pieces spawner and finally another one for the segment. In the end when we're done with the um, all the actual pieces and pieces spawner which we should be during this episode all we'll have to play around with is the segments. So let's go ahead and start what could we be doing? Um, I like to start with the pieces themselves so let's go ahead and find some pieces under the artwork folder. Or actually, sorry, not under the artwork, we're gonna go under the assets. So let's go ahead and find some. We have the SS block, the first, ex <laughs> the actual first item right here. Um, this is gonna be what I'll be using at first. Let's clean it up, clean it up a little bit, uh, move the position back to 0, 0, 0, remove the animator, and then I'm going to be adding piece script to it. Now on this piece, I'll put that on long block, and it's gonna be long block visual index 0, that's fine with me. I'm also going to call this P0 for P0 visual index 0. I'm going to drag and drop this under pieces and that should actually be it. Should we create subfolder? Yes, we are going to create subfolders. This is for the long block. Let's put it in here. And I'm just going to make, like, make sure that you actually follow the same exact um, folder hierarchy I'll be using because else it's going to be really hard to navigate through this. Alright, so if we have a look at this object right here, as you can tell, we have the pivot point um, at uh, maybe at the weird position right here. We want to be swapping it over to that side. We'll have to do these modifications on the pieces themselves. Also, if you don't see the pivot point here at the end or at the beginning, make sure that you actually click on this thing at the top. You might be on center pivot, which is not going to work out for us. You have to be at the, <laughs> the real pivot point of this thing. So P0 right now is not exactly where I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be like this. So if we spawn this at 0, 0, it's going to be going towards that side. So I just swapped it over, press apply, and um, what we'll do actually is we'll wrap this in a object. So I'll create an empty game object, call this P0 again, and I'll rename P the original one for visual. Let's go ahead and drag the visual inside P0, and then move P0 back to the origin uh, and then let's take the visual and with that we can now flip the visual however we want. Okay, so this is gonna be it right here. I'd like to actually move the piece over to P0. I know this is a weird structure, let me, let me go over that again. So basically we have the P0 which is like a parent game object, it has nothing in it. It has the, the P script on it and then beneath it is the visual itself and then we can swap it, we can rescale it if we want, we can do whatever we want at this point with this visual. But you know, like it is right now with a 180 rotation is perfect. Let's override the prefab we had a second ago. And now we have a clean piece to get started spawning. But before we go anywhere else, um, I'm actually going to remove the visual of this thing. Make sure you don't save the prefab after this. We're going to be overriding it for another one. Let's go and rename this to P1 and drop another, um, another long block here, which is going to be the log in this case. So same thing. I'll be moving this here, rotate it 180 degrees, and that's going to be the same exact thing but it's going to be for P1, so make sure that the piece visual index is 1. Just like this we're building prefab one by one, I'm also going to be cleaning this up, we don't need this. 
and here we go so that's p1 let's drag it right at the same exact spot same folder we now have two different type of trains you could call them if you're playing the actual game okay so next up we could be doing some um, ramps or slide doesn't matter well, let's go for the ramps so I create a new folder under pieces called ramp let's find okay so we have ramp ice and uh, ramp wood going to be dragging one in here same thing flip that by 180 degree remove the animator let's create a parent game object called this p0 move this at the origin and then just you know make sure it is beneath the p0 has the proper rotation has the proper pivot point and that's going to be our piece having this done we can go ahead and add the piece folder so piece script say it's a ramp index 0 that's also fine drag and drop here let's remove this guy call this p1 go for the wood ramp this time same thing remove the animator flip it and it's now good to go let's go ahead and drag and drop this on the ramp okay oh sorry we forgot to actually change the visual index did we forget to change the visual index on the other one too let's make sure because this is actually really important this is zero this is one fine zero one we're good okay next up we have the slides let's create a new game object p0 oops move it at the origin and then let's find so the slide for the slide I'll be using this blocker object over here same thing put it under zero this one doesn't actually need flipping um, because it's you know it's being spawned right here but we might want to do it anyway just for the sake of it why not it was meant to be this way so that should be it um, and I just realized that this one is way too huge for our game actually what if we do a 0 0.5 on it in size is that gonna work hmm let's see yeah if we do a 0 0.5 on everything it should be a little bit better and that's also a reason why we have a parent game object. It is so we can actually do little tweaks, little modification like that, like changing the rotation, changing the scale. And this one is going to be a lot better if we do a 0 0.5 on the whole scale. At this point, you know, we haven't really modified the parent game object. It's still there. It's still clean. We can just leave it like that. And that's the one that's going to matter in the end. It's the parent game object because that's the one that has the pieces script to it. Let's not forget about that. Visual index 0, let's drag and drop this under slide, and finally I think we have, um, we don't have any second blocker, do we? Yeah, no, I don't think we have, so let's go ahead and do the jump right away. I'll put that on jump, visual index 0, and then we can finally create another folder. I'm doing this in the wrong order, but who cares as long as we have a nice result in the end. And in terms of the jump, I'll be using this, the bush, here it is, this bush. Obviously way too big right now, but we can actually modify it as well. So let's go ahead and remove this. And the pivot point is not exactly where we want it to be in this case. So let's go ahead and just move it in front of the penguin right here. And we can also play with the scale. So I'm looking at something really small actually. Maybe not that small. What about 0 0.3 on all axis? That seems like it makes a little bit more sense. Let's go ahead and try to jump over it, see if it looks good. Um, this is doable, but it's way too, way too tight. Let's go back and do 0 0.2. Okay, so this is a lot better. Um, I have a feeling that we don't see it enough though on the x axis, so maybe grow it this size. You know, you can play around with this as much as you want. It doesn't really matter in the end. The collider is going to be a lot different, but here is what I'll be using. 
Now the only important thing you need to do is make sure this one is clean right now. This one is on 0, 0, 0 and then the object beneath it has to be the closest to the origin as possible because we're, we're actually going to be spawning right here. And here we go. So we take up that amount of space. That should be perfect. Let's go ahead and save this under jump. And now we have a piece for pretty much everything. And we can go ahead and create our pieces spawner. All right, so the next part is the pieces spawner. This one is going to be super close. The gameplay is going to be is going to have to be super tight, simply because those are the one we'll be using in the code, the physics engine. Really, the other one we just did are just for aesthetic purpose. Like they don't have any use in the game except for aesthetic. Now the pieces spawner are the one that are going to hold the collision, the death collider and they're going to hold the piece spawner script which is going to randomize which aesthetic to put, put um, on the object. So this is where it gets really important. We only need four of those so let's go ahead and create the first one by doing exactly this. So I'm going to create a 3D cube. Let's move it to the origin of the world again or you know what actually that's a bad idea. Let's create a ob empty game object first. I'm going to clean this scene as well. I don't need any of these. Uh, maybe keep the floor. We'll create an empty game object at first, call it long block. Now long block is going to be at the origin of the world as always. It's going to have the piece spawner um, script to it and it's going to be on long block. Now beneath that is going to be a 3D game object, a cube, and this cube have to actually match the size of our gameplay um, in terms of this object. So in terms of size, um, this is going to be 2 in X, 2 in Y, and 6 in Z. Really important, we actually put that um, back on the origin. So 3, uh, sorry, 1 in Y and maybe 3 in Z. That gives us the perfect size that we need. That is going to be the, the size of our train, that's going to be the size of our log, that's going to be the size of our gameplay in general. So let's go ahead and keep this, that's going to be the collider, really important, we name it here so we don't confuse it with anything. And then um, you have to create a zone where you can actually die on this thing. So this is a collider, that's going to be fine. Now we're going to create another 3D object, another 3D cube. I'll actually duplicate it from this one. And this one's going to be the death collider. Let's scale it down, um, move it at the very front because that's the only place where you'll be able to die using this thing. And I'll just make it a little bit smaller like that. Now remember, everything I'm doing right here is not going to be shown. It's not going to be visible in the game. This is just to give us some zone where if the player touches that, he basically dies. So I'll have it this size. Now remember, um, usually there, there can be a ramp in front of it. So if we just put a ramp real quick in front of this, you have to remember that he's not going to touch it if he goes up on the ramp because he's literally following the ramp. So that's perfect. He's only going to collide with this object if he runs straight into it and there's no ramp. Okay, so that is our Death Collider. Um, this one can have some weird size. You know, Collider can have... Collider has to be really tight, but this Death Collider can have some weird size. We'll have to readjust it for sure. And that is pretty much it, I think, for the long block. Oh, never mind. It's not finished yet. We have to choose the Death Collider and, of course, tag it as Obstacle. Once that is done, we are now completed with the very first piece spawner. Let's go ahead and take it, drag and drop this thing right under the piece spawner, and that's going to be our very first object. Um, what I feel like doing when we, we're going to get started is going to have like uh, maybe like a boolean in our level manager that says show debug. And if we're showing debug, let's actually spawn those and like see them in the game. That's going to help us like determine whether it's fun or not and also help us create more segment later on. Oh, that's just an idea out there though I haven't really implemented it just yet, but might be something that would be cool. Okay, so we have the long block next up on the chain. We are going to do say the jump, right? So let's pull a jump so we can just see it. Sorry, not a jump, a, uh, a ramp. I'm going to pull a ramp put it where it should be and let's create an object around it. So create empty, call this ramp, add the piece spawner, it's on ramp by default, good thing. Now let's go ahead and create a 3D game object, a cube, and same thing we have to match this object. 
So how do we go about matching this one? Hmm. First we have to flip it on 45 degrees. We have to make it bigger in X, so maybe 2 in X. So 2 in X is perfect. Uh, what about 2 in Y? Also good. Then we just move this thing up. And we're gonna need more. I just realized we're gonna need more than 2 of course. Maybe 3. And it's fine for us to have some, some um, room beneath the ground. Like it doesn't matter if we have some room beneath the ground or we have some room here. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to drop my, my uh, long block in here and just put it at the end here, see how it works. So I'll put it exactly on two. And then we have to make sure this one matches exactly like this. That would be good. I believe, as you can tell, it gets off the floor almost exactly on zero, zero, and then it perfectly matches the beginning of the long block. Yeah, so this is going to be the actual collider for this thing. I'm going to go ahead and remove the ramp ice so we can see it better. This is it right here. We don't need to add any def collider on this thing because there's no way to die using the ramp. Um, let's rename it to collider. And we now have our ramp. So let's drag and drop this thing in under the piece spawner and we have these two things now. Now the strong point on these things is if we, if we just spawn them at zero, zero, like this, you're going to see that they match perfectly. Then you can move this like say 2 meters because this one is 2 meters high and it just, you know, it fits together. If we start the game here, our player is going to go up and do its thing without dying. That's the important part. Oh, actually we do have a little glitch right here. What is that for? Oh, I believe it's because it is 45 degrees and the slope limit is actually 45. So we have to increment that to say 50. Alright, I'll remind you guys a little bit later on, but right now let's do it as well. Under the slope limit of our character controller, let's put that on 50. Because our maximum slope is 45 right now. So let's just make sure we can actually go up that quite easily, as you can tell. It is quite a smooth going up. Okay, let's move on. We have two more prefabs to you guys, only two more. I know this is painful, it is quite painful for me doing art and prefabs and such. Um, next up we have the slide. Let's go ahead and create a slide object. Zero, zero. Put a piece spawner on it. We're gonna go and choose slide. Now, um, how does our slide actually look like? Let's go and take the blocker, put it back up here. We said 0 0.5 on this thing. We could have took the prefab, it would have been way easier. And then we have to create an actual collider for this thing. So I create a cube object. Make it a lot smaller, so maybe hmm, 0 0.25 in Z. Then let's bump it back up, say around here, 1 meter up. And I'll maybe reduce the size of the Y as well, so 0 0.75 is a little bit better. Um, you know, just, just make it match. You don't really have to have some perfect sizing like I always try to do, but something like that would match. As long as you know that your Pingu is able to sli uh, slide beneath it. And to test it out, what you can always do is just you know, boot the game up. Slide and then pause it. Do we actually get caught? I think we did get caught. Yeah, we did get caught. So we have to bump this a little bit higher. So these values are not going to work. We have to bump this a little bit higher, so maybe put 0 0.8 in here, go up at 125. This way we are 100% sure that he can actually go beneath it. Okay, so let's rename this to death because there is no actual collider on this thing. We can only die and nothing else. So we rename this to death. Then we can go ahead and save it. As simple as that. One more piece left. Let's create a new prefab. Call this one jump. Same thing, put that on the origin, jump, and then what can we actually do here? We have the bush, let's take the prefab, the piece prefab. Again, that one's gonna be super simple, we just have to make something over this rock. Let's go ahead, right click, cube, and we just move this at the proper place. 
So I assume that would be um, 0.5 in Z. Then I'll just resize it to my liking using the custom resize tool. And here we go. All right, let's call this one def. I forgot to set the tag on mine, um, but let's make sure we set the tag on obstacle for this one. Then this one is clean, let's drag and drop it. Head back to the other one just to make sure that everything is clean as well. Under ramp, we don't have any def. Under slide, I'm gonna pull slide back in inside of the game and then um, put the obstacle collider on it. Sorry, obstacle tag, I'm getting a little bit confused. Let's hit apply. Oh boy, so that was a lot of prefabs we've just done, and that's not that's not over. In the end, we'll have to do also a segment prefab, but I think we've done a lot of work for today. At least I've done a lot of work. I spoke too much and I'm losing my voice, so I'll be actually ending this episode today, and we'll do the spelling for real next time on a, a different episode where we are going to create the whole level manager thing. But in case you're wondering what the hell we did today, We've made a bunch of prefab that are basically spawnable now. They're spawnable ready, they have the colliders on them, they have the def collider, they have everything we need to just go ahead and spawn a bunch of stuff. So that is what we'll be doing. I'm gonna go grab some water and uh, maybe a tea. Thank you so much for watching. Click the video on the screen to head over to the next video and also check out the Facebook, the Discord, the Patreon post, every links we have in the description down below. That actually helps us quite a lot do what we do. A little like on the video always helps quite a ton as well and I will be catching you in the next one. Cheers!